Well, hello and welcome to all of our recruiting blog community members and thank you for joining us for this edition of Recruiting Tools and Productivity Hacks. Today I am joined by Mark Tortorici, uh, founder, training manager and staffing manager at Transform Talent Acquisition. Now, Mark and I met at the TrueSF event where he shared a whole off-the-cuff laundry list of software and productivity hacks that I was impressed with. So I asked him to come on the program and share some of his latest finds with us. Uh, Mark, for some of our members who might not be familiar with you, could you maybe share a little bit of your story and your background? Sure, no problem. Um, so my name is Mark. How's everyone doing? Um, my background is uh, in like, sourcing and in training. Um, I do a lot of training now because that's basically what my company is all about. And uh, I'm always looking to uh, find out, you know, and do new different things, new different sourcing methods, and also like new cool tools, which I think um, are fun to do. Um, you know, make sure they don't waste your time, but you know, they, are, they are definitely fun to do. So always looking for you know, ways to get more. Great. Well, thank you for being here. So uh, what do you have to show for us today? Um, well, so um, let's see. Can you see my screen or no? I have to. Um, so um, let's see. Can you guys see my screen or no? Uh, not quite yet. Okay, let me. Uh, Okay, how about, uh, how about now? Perfect. Cool. So um, when it comes to add-ons, um, I think uh, a couple of different things. Of course, you don't want to use like too many because, well, they'll definitely slow down your browser and you'll, you'll definitely notice how slow your computer gets once you start using these um, more and more. So you want to make sure that it is cool to have a bunch, but um, you want to make sure you kind of manage them. And so one tool that I've, you know, I think we've, I've mentioned before, um, or if not, you've probably heard it from somebody else, is uh, um, Extensity, which helps you manage your add-ons. So you can probably see in very tiny letters there, it says Extensity. Okay. But this add-on lets you off all of your um, add-ons and activate them without having to go over to here and then go to Settings and then go over to um, extensions and then find the one that you want to enable or disable. So just using the uh, extensity add-on is a lot quicker and a lot cleaner. And sometimes like you have um, add-ons that kind of like clash with each other. Mm -hmm. And this is just an easy way to um, manage them. It's, a, it's like a so, drop down with just a whole uh, list of shortcuts to kind of get to the extensions. Yes, drop down menu, and the, these are all the extensions that I've loaded on my browser. And that's it's just an easy way to turn them on and off. So, for instance, like I just turned on Connect Six um, People Discovery add on, mm -hmm. and so now that's on, and so now I can use that one, um, you know, as needed. Cool. Now that one works pretty easy. Yeah, pretty easy. And they're basically just one click, so, one click on, one click off. Yeah, one click on, one click off. Yeah, and you can just go over here and uh, yeah, turn it on and off with any of these. So that one's that one's pretty cool. So when it comes to actually like um, uh, search, um, there's a couple ones that I do like. Um, I think I've talked about this one before. I think actually we were talking about this at tr at uh, the True Conference. So I'm going to pull up here a string for you. Um, there I am giving away all my secret strings here. Okay. <laughs> so here's we a, a Google that. string. Uh, it's a spider um, um, GitHub profiles. And actually, now that I've done this, actually, I want to do a different one. <laughs> I'm going to do, do, op do open up because GitHub is pretty easy and everyone knows it. But I want to do open up instead. So let's change it. Now, what searching for people is you want to be able to cross-reference with other other places. And so 
um, if you're doing a local search in a certain part of the country or you, whatever search you're doing, it doesn't have to be local, you can actually get to a profile. So let me click on this person. Hopefully this is a PG rated profile. Okay, so let's say I look at this profile. Let's say I like the fact that this guy has been using Python since 1989. And I'm like, you know what, I want to find out more about this person. Let's say I don't know anything about this person, even though he's got a website here. With an add-on, I can actually highlight his name and cross-reference by using a hot a shortcut key. And then it'll immediately put his name into a search on LinkedIn. Oh. Huh. Yeah, so it's like a one-click way just to move information around. It's like, a, it's like the poor man's bookmark list. <laughs> That's awesome. But it makes it, it makes it easy because you don't you could, yeah you could easily just come over here, copy and then open up a new tab, go to LinkedIn, paste. But this just makes it a little bit easier to uh, do that. Also, with a different shortcut key, I can actually highlight his name and do this, um, and it will search for his name on Google. Now, of course, if the guy's got a common name, then you're going to get a bunch of different people, but. Um, for some of the uh, engineers with less common names, this can be a good search to use, this, uh, this add-on. And you can do the same thing with Google, uh, Google Plus. I can come over here and say, search for Google Plus profiles with this guy's name. And see? So here's a Google Plus string, and at the end of it, I've got his name tacked on. So all that is kind of pre-programmed in the add-on. Wow. And you just have to highlight the name, and it does this for you. So it's pretty cool. I just saves so quite a bit of time. It, yeah, it, saves you, it just saves you time. And when you're sourcing, it's really all about time. So the add-on that does that is called the search bar. The and search bar? It looks like, yeah, search bar, one word. And it looks like this. This is the, uh, the interface for it. Uh, download this from the Google um, Chrome Store mm -hmm. and download the extension. Um, you can configure it to really search anything. I have it configured to search like Google and um, and other engines like that. But again, really, you can use it to search anything. Um, I also have it to search Facebook. You can see I have it to search like Facebook in San Francisco Bay Area, Facebook in I mean, I'm sorry, LinkedIn in San Francisco Bay Area, LinkedIn in Canada. I mean, if you, there's a, a certain part of the world that you search all the time, it could be good to come up with a shortcut key that will get you that. And that's what I, I like about this is that I can assign shortcut keys. As long as they're not being used by the operating system, then we're, we're good to go. Wow. Yeah. And so once you have the name highlighted, then, um, then it's just a matter of... Um, Highlight the name using your shortcut key. And so awesome. this one I, is a Google shortcut key, and it just takes the name, puts it in quotes, and searches it. So kind of a, kind of a cool, cool trick. And uh, again, if the person's got a more not-so-common name, uh, a more uncommon name, then it works even better. Because then, granted, this guy's website is here, but you can also take a look and see where else is this person on the web. Right, and you can get more information about them that way. Or if I wanted just to cut to the chase and um, go to his local profile, then I have a local search for LinkedIn, and I can see he's at high five. So it makes it kind of easy that way. It's great. Yeah, so that's search bar. So that it takes a, a slight amount of configuration to do, you know, to do this, but it's. It really is not that much. Um, uh, as long as you, as long as you're uh, accessing a site that has a search, um, uh, a search feature in the URL, like LinkedIn, for instance, like with LinkedIn, um, see where there's up here in the URL where it says search, and then uh, that postcode looks a, like, mm -hmm. yeah, has the postal code, and then right here where it says keywords. And then as long as there's a variable for whatever it is you want to search, I can create a string and then just replace this with percent %s. And then whatever I highlight, it'll replace it and automatically search it. 
So um, it's uh, pretty configurable that way. So yeah, so that's search bar. Definitely try that one. We'll have to check that one out. But I guess the uh, the page, yeah. your setup page is kind of plug and play. You can put in whatever you want and uh, choose whatever, like you said, shortcuts yeah. are not being used currently by the operating system. Yeah, you can put out whatever you want. And uh, you can see there's a bunch here that I, I haven't used, like Amazon and eBay. But I mean, the ones I do use are like, um, you know, Wikipedia, Google, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google Plus. So but if you can set it to whatever you want. You can do who is lookups. Actually, that one I, I sh that one should be activated. I don't know why it's not. But um, the who is lookups can be great too because you can just select a domain name and then do a who is lookup for that particular domain. And if nobody's using like Alt W, for instance, actually I think I'm using Alt W on Wikipedia, so I'd have to use a different shortcut key. But whatever shortcut key you want to choose, you would just assign it to, you know, who is lookup. And then I'd be able to highlight a domain and then find out who's the person who is behind that particular domain. Oh. Yeah. So it's kind of kind of cool. <laughs> no Quora on there, I see. Yeah, Quora. Quora's good. Quora's good. It's kind of a... Uh, there's some interesting stuff on Quora. <laughs> there is some interesting stuff on Quora. Not always good interesting, but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I, there's like a question like, you know, why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> Be a little open-ended. So yes, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's another one. Um, and then I'm sure, of course, everyone, you know, should be using um, tools that uh, kind of do the, the contact information sharing. With any of them, you want to be careful because you have to kind of double-check them to make sure you're not um, getting the wrong information and emailing the wrong person. So with anything, whether it's like um, uh, Connect Six or Profit or something like that, you just want to make sure that when you're on the person's page that you're really looking at that person's page and not somebody else. You're going to trust but verify. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, the verify really is just, um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not like uh, foolproof. <laughs> so if you're on a person's page, like let's say um, – this one, then I would take a look and see if there is anything for this individual once I go through and look at their blog, look for their email addresses off of the blog. And then for some reason, if I don't find it there, then I might take what I see here with a grain of salt and see if there's anything in Connect 6 or if there's anything here in Profit. And so those are the two that... Um, uh, you want to take a look at first and see if you can find anything. Just make sure you do a you know a sanity check and verify that they're there. Because I mean I know a lot of candidates, a lot of engineering candidates have the same name as somebody else, and they get contacted by recruiters and then they just they get mad like because obviously they're being looked at as the wrong person. So you just want to you know as sorcerers or recruiters, you want to make sure we do our jobs and. Uh, Kind find of the right do one. some due diligence gotcha to verify that so yeah so those are just a couple that are uh, cool and then of course another one that's um cool that the last one i want to talk about is this um highlighter for google so i'm going to pull up or maybe i'll just make a string here real quick um, um this the key the cool thing about this search is it allows you to um allows you to highlight keywords that you search not only on your Google page, but also subsequent pages afterwards. Hmm. It's called, and it's called, exactly, I'll tell you the name. It's called Highlight Keywords for Google Search. Highlight That's Keywords for Google Search. Yeah. And uh, you take your, your um, <clears throat> take your, uh, your, let's say your different titles that you're looking for, um, spell programmer correctly. Um, I think that was the Dutch spelling. I've seen it both ways. Yeah, the Dutch spelling. The Bork, Bork, Bork spelling. <laughs> okay, so you... Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. 
kind of it actually probably be C kernel file system Linux or Linux. Okay, so let's say we're looking at this one. And I get a zillion and one people. That's fine. So now when you're um, taking a look at any of these people and um, you want to use the highlight keywords for search, there's no keywords being highlighted right now. But if I go back here and I click the extension, it's going to highlight all the words here, which is fine because they're already being highlighted. But then when I click on a, sub when I click on a subsequent page, it's going to highlight them here. See, like oh. that. Yeah, so it's cool because it continues that, that part of the search and it ties in with your um, Google string that you entered in the first place. So I kind of like that when I'm sourcing. Um, if, you know, the highlights, um, sometimes it's distracting and then other times it's good. Um, it just de it depends, I guess, on the day. <laughs> <laughs> No, I could see that being very helpful. Yeah, for, for sourcing, I mean, when you're sitting there and you're like, okay, where is it? Kernel, file space, file system, user space, where are the words? <laughs> was it something they actually did or something they wrote about or how is it relevant? I can see that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I find it helpful um, just because of the, uh, yeah, the subsequent keywords. And there's other highlight um, add-ons, um, but this one I think I like the most, at least at the moment. Um, the, there was another one that was even better, but I think it's for Firefox only. Ah. Um, yeah, but this one uh, works pretty well. And so, yeah, th those are the couple ones I like. And d nobody's making Safari extensions, or? No, no. Yeah. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I mean, there are some like there are some like official add-ons and extensions, but because um, uh, browsers like. You know, Safari and Internet Explorer are closed source. Um, the, the code is not available to just anybody, and so you just can't go in and just write an extension and then have it work because you don't know the source code and you don't know if it's going to work. And so you you need to actually, uh, if they even have a partner program, which I think they do, um, then you got to make sure you're an established software vendor, established software partner, and then you have to develop an extension that. Uh, that Microsoft or Apple feels is worth something while. worth looking at or mm -hmm. something that will help them. So it's not like, you know, Firefox or Chrome where it's all open source and anybody can develop an extension that does anything. Um, so a little, little different. Great. Yeah, so those are the, those are the main ones. Um, the other one that's, that is kind of cool is uh, the last one here is the... Um, let me see if I can pull up a good example here. That's not a good example. Is uh, the one to let you know how many LinkedIn connections that you have. Um, this one, uh, uh, Dean DeCosta showed me this one. And I, I thought it was kind of... But it's called LinkedIn InBooster. LinkedIn and in InBooster? In, in Booster. And InBooster is just one... Um, is one... Uh, word but um of course now i can't find here we go i'll, I'll click on linus torvalds <laughs> ah. anyways but if it's it only works if it's over 500 um uh, here we'll, we'll click on guido van rossen there you go so the way it works is um see how it changed from 500 to an oh actual yeah to an actual number i can see that yeah, so that's all it does. And, um, yeah, I think he put no recruiters, please, because, like, some recruiter wanted to recruit him for a Python job. <laughs> oh, I sadly could see that happening. Yeah, I think that happened to the creator of Ruby, too. Years experience of Ruby, too. I was like, uh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's great stuff. Well, um, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, no. So those are like just the the, the main ones. The, yeah, some of the main ones. Um, I can probably think of some more. Um, yeah, uh, next time we talk that are a little different. Well, but uh, those are some, those are some ones I've liked. Also, too, if you uh, do, you, do you use uh, Trello at all? 
I remember you talking about Trello. I, I've yet to play around with it. Do you, you want to give us a quick pointer or an overview? Yeah, I mean, Trello is cool just because of the uh, um, um, uh, the pro kind of like the project management piece of it. And um, let's see if I can remember my login. Tim Beck says I do not. Hold on here. You don't use the old um, ABCD password, one, two, three? Uh, it actually is password, but um, I didn't want to tell it, tell people live. Um, yeah. Actually, could, could you just delete that? Well, we'll go ahead and we'll edit that part out, yeah. Okay, let's see if I, I guessed it right. Cool. So uh, let me make sure you can see my screen here. So this is um, what Trello looks like. And basically, it's meant to be a bunch of different cards that you can use in like a project management capacity and also a workflow capacity. And you can use it a bunch of different ways. I've seen a bunch of really creative ways to use this. I mean, I've seen one person actually use it almost like um, a, a CRM tracking system. Oh. Um, but yeah, so you can do a lot of different things. One thing that is cool is to be able to assign number values to um, these different cards. So kind of like and a priority level? Pri priority level, or in this case, I was doing it in terms of like hours of work. Oh, okay. And I, think, I think for project management or like if you're trying to rate candidates or whatever it is, you want to be able to rate them or assign a number value to them. And so there's an add-on that's called – it's called Scrum for Trello. And that's what enables you to do that, the little hours number here. And you can see I've assigned hours to here. And then that also tallies the entire number of hours for this particular project. And so that's um, uh, another add-on that's really only specific for Trello. But it is kind of cool to be able to do that um, and use this to, you know, as Trello is used and move stuff from one, one spot to another. Oh, so that, yeah, that's kind of a, uh, yeah, a little bit of a Trello there. Well, thank you. Yeah, and the add-on is Scrum. Scrum for Trello. For Trello. I'll yeah. have to add that into. And members, we're gonna go ahead and um, you'll see underneath us right now a whole list of like the links of everything we talk about. So um, if you like any things you're hearing about, just click on those links. But Mark, thank you again so much for uh, coming on and, and sharing all of this information with like our members. There's a lot of great tech that's out there. Um, I very quickly think it's almost unwieldy about how much stuff is out there. So it's great to have a resource like you who uh, is very well adept at knowing what these things are going on. Um, members, I do want to hear what you guys think, what works, what doesn't, what are you using, what's overhyped. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about. Also, feel free to tweet me at Daniel underscore tre uh, trending. And you can reach Mark at, uh, at Mark Nexus. Is that right? Yeah, Mark.Nexus. Mark Perfect. And your Twitter handle too. Was yeah, yeah, my, at Mark Nexus. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. All right, then uh, thank you for coming on so much. Members enjoy, and uh, we'll see you for the next one. All right.